a Gwyn. Hello, how's everybody doing? How's things? How's life? How's the universe? How has your New Year's been? It's the first stream of 2024. Hello. How is everybody doing? How's things? Uh, hello to John, if you're still here. Uh, hello to Simon S63 Tech, and hello to Joe. How are you doing, guys? How's things? Did everyone have a good New Year's? Did anyone get up to anything over the New Year period or or otherwise? Let us know. Uh, also, I will chat Thunderbird down so that it doesn't make noise. Um, yeah, hello. How's everybody doing? Um, it's still playing more notifications even though Thunderbird is closed. Amazing. Sorry for the noise. Um, I, I have to assume that that's coming through, so... Yeah. I uh, got drunk with a cold and made it much worse. <laughs> nice. <laughs> Congratulations, I hope you're doing better now. Uh, hello, Crazy Booyah. How you doing, man? Hello, Simon. How's things? How was your New Year's? That you celebrated 12 hours before we did. <laughs> How's things? Uh, before you ask, I didn't do anything fancy. I did stay up, although I say stay up. I'm up until 1, 2, 3 a.m. every day anyway, so it's not really staying up as much as just I was awake during the transitional period. Uh, uh, it was uh, an okay night, nice and chilled. Good. Yeah, same. We watched the fireworks on a live stream and uh, from London and uh, yeah, that was a bit <laughs> bed it's had for me getting old <laughs> fair play I do have the benefit of not needing to get up it up uh, early in the morning and I'm uh, very much not a morning person at all uh, yeah I, I, I come alive at night um, like uh, mentally anyway um I definitely wake up <laughs> more. Um, yeah, so, yeah. Uh, hello, Wap, how you doing, man? How's things? I New Year's, went out, had like three drinks, but somehow that made me ill and hungover. Nice. Wonderful. I'm glad I don't drink. <laughs> the only stories I ever hear are either people doing, like, getting drunk and then doing stuff that they find funny, but ultimately probably end up regretting, or... The bad experiences. <laughs> uh, hello, Ish. How you doing, man? How's things? Uh, I have kids. I'm up uh, early every morning, usually falling asleep by 9, 10 every night. Fair. I, uh, I'm, I'm definitely in the um, no kids department. <laughs> Both in terms of preferences and reality. Um, and also, I... I you know, my, my, my job, as it were, is uh, quite flexible. Um, yeah, the the boss doesn't mind when I start working. <laughs> um, uh, yeah, it's fun. I'm risk adverse, so I don't tend to do anything silly. I suppose that's good. Uh, doing great. Aquaplane seven times on the way home tonight. Nice. Four times the brakes stop working, twice the engine made whining noises. <laughs> Do you know what would work great for that? Winter tires? Huh? I got them back. Yeah. I can't remember when they actually, I think it was like they, they arrived on Friday and I got uh, the Friday after stream and I got them fitted on Saturday. So I have winter tires now. I think my car looks great. Um... I, uh, they're a little darker than I thought they would be, but in the light, they're, uh, they're real nice. Yeah, I joined the winter tire bragging gang. <laughs> I say bragging. Just fun. Uh. Where's a decent picture? Sure. Focus. See? Um, 
Where are you streaming to both Twitch and YouTube? I am indeed. It's called Restream. Um, and mostly I'm streaming to both because, uh, especially in the earlier days, YouTube really, really sucked for watching live streams. <laughs> Um, and so Twitch was generally a better place to watch the streams, uh, whereas nowadays um, YouTube seems to have, have uh, cleaned up their act a bit, and it's better. There's not so many outages anymore, is the, the biggest thing. Um, uh, it's nice to know if it does snow, which it won't, I'll be able to look smugly at all of those summer wheel plebs. <laughs> Exactly. <laughs> uh, nah. Um, the, 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 as I said when I bought them, the, the reason that I have winter tires is because I have summer tires specifically, and uh, they do not grip in wet or um, icy or snowy conditions. Uh, and so, especially now I have the uh, ability to store a summer set of wheels um i now have a winter set of wheels which i'm quite happy about and also i went from 19 inch uh wheels with uh 255 uh, 35 tires which is quite thin uh like low profile tires to uh 18 inch uh 245 45 tires so a, a decently bigger sidewall and my god, the difference in ride quality is insane. It's so much more comfortable. Like, it wasn't bad before, but it was sporty, and I don't mind that, but uh, I, I, I can't, like, the, the I, I store the tires at my friend's house in, in his garage, and uh, the road to get to his house is laden with horrible speed bumps. It's not the straight across, it's the... Uh, of island type ones um the like red island type ones um except they're not cut right so they're too wide so no matter what vehicle you have you bump over them no matter how perfectly you line it up you just you always bump over it um uh and so driving over that in on, on my summer wheels it's an uncomfortable process now it's still uncomfortable with the winter towers but it's much softer, much more even and nice. Um, uh, car noob question. Um, when you say you change the wheels and tires, is the outer diameter still the same? Yes, so that is one thing that you have to do the maths on if you're changing the, the rim size. Uh, so I went from uh 19 inch uh rims or wheels, uh, with then. Uh, the, the, the mass of the tires is weird, but basically they're 245 millimeter wide tires and the 35 part of that number means that the sidewall is 35% of 255 millimeters. So if you add that up, they come out to, I can't remember what it was, like 571 mil or something like that. Uh, that's a 57 centimeter diameter. 18 inch wheels plus 245 45 so 45% of 245 uh, ends up being almost exactly like a couple of millimeters off of uh, diameter difference uh, so uh, I double checked with my uh, GPS uh, on the phone and my um, 10 Hertz GPS in the race box that I have and um, they are the, the speedo is is perfectly accurate uh so the the, the, the exact same size basically but actually i laid them out next to each other while i was fitting them um the the aspect of the picture isn't perfect but they are the same size so i went from the stock audi rotor wheels to these uh two drive ones uh separate summer and winter towers master race <laughs> <laughs> Imagine having wide tires, so much softer. It's nice. It's good. Gives good grip with 333 horsepower. <laughs> um, you can o ODB or ODB2 uh, into most cars and tell it what wheels you have. That is an option. You can correct it. Um, I want to keep the same size, uh, personally. 
But yeah, you can. Uh, I got Winter Tires and never replaced them because it costs like $25 uh, just to replace the tire, so $100 to replace all four. That's outright robbery. Oh, what, like to fit them? So, general, uh, generally speaking, in the UK, you don't buy tires, you don't buy the tires and then pay to have them fitted. You buy the tires and fitting all as one price, basically. So, if a tire costs like the ones that I fitted cost £163 per tire, I think. Um, so I paid £163 times four, uh, and that includes the tires, fitting them, and balancing them. Although, uh, funnily enough, the the place that I bought the tires um, had run out of wheel weights. Uh, the, the weights that you stick to your... Um, uh, the, the rim to, to balance the tire so that they spin uh, evenly and don't vibrate. Um, they'd run out of those. So I, I I took them, stuck them in the boot of my car. I have an estate. It's great. You can fit lots of stuff, like four wheels and <laughs> tires. Um, and uh, I went to a quick fit that's just around the corner from me and I have a friend who works there and slipped them some cash to balance them for me um, and got a refund for the, the wheel weight uh, portion of the, the bill. So yeah uh buy tires buy wheels put winter and summer tires in separate wheels all you need to do is then uh screwing and unscrewing to replace the wheels yes that's what i did the only downside is you then have to store a set of four wheels <laughs> for six months of the year well, actually for 12 months of the year because you swap them but you need to store an extra set of wheels somewhere um and in the uk space is is, is a premium <laughs> Um, I paid seven pounds for the fitting of two tires once. Right, nice. Uh, a tire price includes fitting. Yes, uh, I got your wheels at last. I did on Friday, and then got them fitted on Saturday. Um, what if you get a set of tires and wheels? So that is one of the options. When I bought the wheels, the company that sells the wheels will also uh, sell you a complete package, as in the those wheels plus tires on them. The problem was that they didn't sell the tires that I wanted, and they didn't sell the size that I wanted. They only went to 24540, not 45, which was the right size. Um, and it was the the tires that I would have picked were more expensive than the ones that I ended up with. Uh, so it was basically just a worse choice all around, and it would have taken even longer for them to actually ship them. So long story short, I bought the wheels, bought the tires separately, and had them fitted. Uh, Um, uh, oh, Towers, I was happy to not be the only one uh, to scratch the work mark this year. Uh, then literally the last day of the year, slashed the tire and uh, scratched the rim. Nice. <laughs> uh, also, I, I, as always, if I missed anything, uh, which I possibly have, feel free to... Um, uh, reply uh hello uh harry hello uh ted uh hello psycho gaming uh hello jim uh chris luca is that everyone i think that's everyone i haven't said hello to if i have haven't said hello hello um ba -ba 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 -ba. Uh, so some tires were the great uh were great for last year's british summer um Yes, yeah, I did, I tracked it, um, oh no, it was like 2021 that I tracked the, the car with those tires, or um, the same tires, and they worked great, actually, the track, quite warm. <laughs> and if you got to disable the silly chat reactions, I'm sorry, I don't think I can anymore, can I? Customization? Live chat, oh, oh, I can. Yay! I can now read the comments. <laughs> um, thank you, Chris. Uh, senpai noticed me. <laughs> uh, where am I at? What did I miss? Uh, welcome back, John. I I, I said hello earlier. Um, ba -ba 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 -ba. Uh, Wheels are inside the tires anyway, no extra extra space. Um, yes, but I didn't have the tires until I 
until they were fitted onto the wheels. The wheels themselves fit, but anyway. Um, uh, I mean, in theory, I just use cheap rubbish tires year round and try not to go out in the winter or summer or or spring or, or autumn. That dish. <laughs> I mean, the thing is that all season tires, like standard all season tires, which is prob if you're buying, you know, cheap tires, that's roughly what they're not good, but what they're roughly aimed at, um, are are generally fine. The reason that I I I care enough to have spent as much as I have on uh, these winter tires and winter wheels is that I have very specifically summer tires that do not do that well in wet or uh cold conditions um so yeah uh ba -ba 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 -ba. uh what tires do you think i should go next was thinking toya and ankang um are you uh i take it you you mean like Summer tires rather than winter ones, because I I've spent the last like month researching winter tires, so um, my brain's on on that one at the moment. Um, I don't have any personal experience with uh, Toyo or Nine Kang tires actually. Um, just daily cup two tires, <laughs> as you do. Um, that's what I use all season. I don't have five hundred. Uh, horsepower under the bonnet yeah that's the thing is that like even with all-wheel drive in the wet i can and do wheel spin all the all the wheels if i if i plant my foot from a from a dig um so yeah <laughs> um i uh, had a quick look at 3d printer he attached the extruder head on back to front uh all works fine does appear to use some proprietary chip on the spools though need to look at that more ah okay so yeah that's the that's the thing um yeah <laughs> uh I, I i i i quite like um resin printers uh specifically because they're kind of a simpler machine like in the sense that it's an LCD which shouldn't break. There's a UV LED, and then there are um, uh, there's a single uh, you know ball screw axis and a, a servo motor, and that's it. Whereas with a a uh, FDM 3D printer, a filament based 3D printer, you have you know X Y Z uh, motion. Uh, you have bed leveling i mean you technically have better leveling on the the resin printers too but it's normally a ball head that is as soon as you you know uh lock it down you you never touch it again and it's fine um yeah the, uh, as, as Wapta says the only problem with resin printers is the um chemical nature <laughs> Uh, which like there's pros and cons to both, but the the material quality, like the print quality, um, I'm reaching over for a 3D print that I know is bad quality, <laughs> but like you know this is straight from the printer with with a a broken film, um, and it's still like it has the granularity to print thread threaded holes, and you know there's there's no layer lines, there's no like work that needs doing it's fantastic um so yeah I, I definitely like that aspect and generally the reliability i've only had a couple of prints fail um everything else as long as you know uh what sort of things to do or not do it'll work fine um which is nice uh most Yokohamas are sold. So I have um, Yokohama Advance Sport V105 or 107s um, as my summer tires. That's what the car came with. And so I, I only need to replace two. So I stuck with it for now. Um, and I've swapped the tires around because it's a uh, square uh, profile. It's all, all four tires the same size, width, uh, diameter, etc. Um, and so uh, I can... Uh, 
I've swapped them round because the fronts had worn down faster because they're both driven wheels and steering, so they wear down faster. So I'm hoping that uh, sitting on the back they'll do less damage uh, and the fronts can wear down a bit more evenly and then I can replace all four. Um, although that's going to be expensive too. Uh, but yeah, so once I have the, the choice to, to swap to all four, I'm thinking Pilot Sport 4s or 5s or whatever is available and for a reasonable price. Um, but yeah, we'll, we'll, we'll see. Um, yeah, uh, seen too many unwanted spaghetti bolognese creations from extruder printers. <laughs> yes. Um... Ba, 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 ba. Uh, while we're chatting cars, I have an indicator bulb down in the tailgate of my uh, Mark II Insignia uh, estate. Doesn't look like a DIY fix, can anyone advise? Uh, is it in the... Uh, well, okay, so is it definitely a bulb or is it an LED? Um, I can't remember what... Uh, um, what counts as a Mark II insignia, um, like what that looks like. Uh, but generally speaking, they should be repairable. If it's an LED, that might be a problem, um, if it's part of the whole uh, unit. But if it is an actual bulb, it should be accessible. Sometimes it's accessible via, uh, like, technically thumbscrew, but really you need a socket. Uh, to remove it type thing um but yeah it, it it depends maybe post in the discord a couple of pictures of the uh the hill assembly and the uh inside of the boot um if i can uh assist i mean i'll probably just google it and see if <laughs> see how to get in but Um, an indicator uh, should be used as serviceable. It won't be the entire unit. Uh, it's not in the boots. In the okay. Ah, okay. Um, so there are a couple of different ways that you normally get into that. Uh, a lot of the time, there's a panel in the like. If you open the tailgate and look up at the inside of it, there's normally a panel, uh, a block panel you can remove. Sometimes there are dicks and you have to remove the whole thing, and sometimes you have to, um, like, they, they sort of slide out or something, but, uh, yeah. I'll have a look after the stream, um, and also, again, if you can post some pictures of what it looks like. Uh, there's, uh, an indicator should be user serviceable, it won't be the entire unit. Um, while I would agree, a lot of modern cars, it is the entire... Uh, unit. If it's an LED, uh, it shouldn't fail. <laughs> um, they generally don't, but uh, I just got Alfred's to play dumb. It's, uh, I think fitting is either the same price or not that much more than the bulb itself, so yeah, why not? Um, but yeah, so like for example, my uh, the front lights on my car, the daytime running lights, uh, oh no, they're not, are they? It's, it is an indicator. The B9 version of my car, the Audi A4, um, S4, but semantics. Um, the daytime running light is the uh, indicator on the front. Um, and So it's an LED, so it shouldn't fail. But I'm pretty sure that if that does fail, you need to replace the whole headlight. Um, I think. Uh, a friend of mine took their car to Halfords for battery change. They lost her car for three months. What? <laughs> like, so obviously she dropped it off, but like, the the normal Halfords stores would do a battery change, let alone the Audi, like, uh, Audi, um, Halfords Auto Centers. Um, Wow. Okay. 
Oh, wow. <laughs> um, also, a battery chain should only take five minutes. Um, like, you know, depending on where it is, it, 10. Like, my battery's in the boot, and so you have to take the boot floor off, uh, take the spare wheel out, uh, and then take the, like, bracketry, or the, the spare wheel tools stuff out, and then take the bracket off, and then take the battery out and pop it back in. But, like, yeah, she just left it while shopping. What? Like, okay, so did, did they, like, did she call the police? It was a 3 Series BMW. Um, yeah, like, I, I need to know more. <laughs> <laughs> I'm so confused. <laughs> How rot. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, I remember reading it could cost more than £600 to change a headlight bulb in a brand new car. I had to remove the suspension to get the back of the unit. Um, so that's almost all BMWs. <laughs> um, so, I, actually, uh, Volvo... Uh, I know because I had one, uh, love to make their headlights accessible, which is wonderful, um, because it you, you open the, the bonnet, the hood for Americans, uh, you disconnect the, the uh, electrical connector, and then there's this little metal stake. It looks like a tent pole rod that you would like jam into the grass to hold your like tent to the ground. Um, you pull that out, and then you just pull the headlight out of the front. <laughs> There's a few tabs. It's it's a bit of a wiggle, but once it's out, that's it. Uh, police wouldn't do anything. Halfords gave her a car to use. They gave her no explanation. Once it turned back up, she now has a new car uh, with a tracker on it. I mean, that's clearly a stolen vehicle. <laughs> like, that's, that's taken without consent. That's the, the actual law that you would use to, to um, you know, prosecute them. Uh, like, it, 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 what? <laughs> uh, like, I, I can only assume that, like, you know, an employee who had access to the key stole it is, is the only you know thing i can i can surmise but um yeah <laughs> i lose my wallet about eight times a day but my car is usually pretty easy to find <laughs> oh dear please have ampr and stuff sounds weird yeah yeah they do also like most local towns now have ampr i know uh, my local town does everywhere <laughs> Um, uh, yeah, insane. I said the same. Uh, she let it go once she got it back. I told her not to, but she didn't want even more stress. Yeah, I, I like. I can, I can definitely understand not wanting the stress. Um, but yeah, was it was it the store or was it Halford's Auto Center? Because I mean. Yeah, actually, that's a good point. Uh, how how much how much higher was the mileage? <laughs> um, uh, funny, I took my uh car to Halfords to fit a dash cam. I went back and they couldn't find my keys. Turns out the guy who did it went and got some lunch. Took my keys with him. I was waiting for thirty minutes. Jesus, that's awful, man. <laughs> Like, uh, you know, accidents happen and all, but a, such a series of accidents. Uh, it was a store. That's even weirder, man. Like, at least if it was the Halfords Auto Center, you know, there's like there's a bunch of cars. You know, I don't know. Maybe they gave the car to some the wrong car to someone. If you know, two similar three series, you know, whatever. But like. Jesus Christ. 
Oh, I hope she didn't pay for the battery. <laughs> oh, God. New Alfred's manager Dynamo is causing trouble again. <laughs> oh, dear. Oh, um, a bunch of garages around me don't have enough space in them for all their customers' cars. Yeah, um, that's that's pretty common, um, especially with some of the um, cheaper garages around me. Interestingly, um, like there's a, a quick fit basically next door to me, uh, but unless a customer like just leaves their car. Like they do lock the the sort of compound thing, but like um they uh what you call it? Bring the gun blank. We've got to the Andrew goes mad part of the stream a little bit earlier. In fact almost exactly halfway. Who knew? <laughs> right, they lock the sort of compound thing, like they lock the gates. Uh but it's very rare that they leave cars outside. Uh, it was, it's only if like a customer says they're going to come back and then don't. And then, or like, leaves and takes the keys and obviously they can't bring it inside. Um, that, they, that they wouldn't. So yeah. Guys, let's go to Kings Lynn. The MG uh, dealer advert said so. <laughs> <laughs> I've collected my car from garages and they've left the keys in the ignition parked outside. Jesus. <laughs> That's bad. <laughs> I use one mechanic. I trust him, and it's going to be hell when he retires. Yeah, so that's going to thing is that I am the mechanic for <laughs> for my car. Um, you know, obviously I have to drop it off for an MOT, but I, it's it's the quick fit that's thirty steps from my house. <laughs> um, so I can you know I can uh, I can go past them when I when I need. Um. Yeah. I'm the mechanic unless it's something like cam belt and a CBA. So that's the thing is that like at some point uh, in the probably next one to three years, I will need to drop uh, my uh, engine and do the timing chains. The timing chains are at the back of the engine, uh, which means gearbox off. Technically, maybe you can do them in the car. Like, if you can lift the car high enough to drop the gearbox off, uh, then you can do it in the car. But it's one of those, while you're in there, you should really do the uh, PCV, the um, water pump, and thermostat. Uh, I'd need to do the other intercooler core. And so it ends up being, you should just drop the engine and, and do it that way. Um, and so, uh, at some point I'm going to need to do that. I kind of want to do it myself. I'm pretty sure I can. I'm pretty sure I have enough tools for it, but I just don't have a lift. And I really need a lift and a table to drop everything down on. Um, and I don't have that, so. I might have to find someone. We'll see. Um... <laughs> you got a standing desk? That can work. <laughs> I think it's right for 150 kilos. It can barely lift me on it. <laughs> oh dear. Uh, my mechanic is a dealership due to mobility. Uh, thankfully, they seem to be okay, even if they do charge ludicrously for trivial items like wipers. Yeah, so the dealership is an interesting uh like set of incentives because they have they have the incentive of they're gonna charge as much as they physically can because they're the dealer but at the same time they also have a bit of a reputation to uphold and uh the main brand like the main actual car manufacturer to answer to if they're you know dicks about something so um yeah Uh, my car now has 160,000, uh, I assume miles, uh, on it, uh, I thought about having the clutch done, mechanic said, because of labour, it's 1,100 pounds, the front and side of my car needs to come off to get to one bolt. 
Oh, I hate that. What car is it? Eight and a half hours labor for a clutch change. Oh, Jesus, that's a lot. <laughs> I think I paid 800 for my Volvo. Um, which still seems like an awful lot. Uh, my Mazda dealer charges £144 for diagnosis, no matter what, and that's on warranty. Jesus. That's that's a lot. I was actually talking about this uh, to my lovely wife earlier. The thing that annoys me with car dealership diagnostic fees is that it's, it really is mostly just they plug in the dealership diagnostic scanner, press go, and then come back with a report and say, oh, well, the computer says you need this, this, and this. It'll be £2,000. It's not actually diagnostics in the sense that they, like, will look at that report and go, okay, it says this, so let's have a look at that part. And then they take the part off and inspect it, bench test it, whatever. If they have another one available, they stick it in to see if that solves the problem. And then they can go, cool, well, we've done this. And if you want this to stay as it is and fixed, it's this much money. And you go, okay, cool. No, they just look at the computer and say it needs this. And then you've got to pay 50, 100, 144 pounds uh, just to say that. Yeah. Computer says no. Yeah. Uh, Tesla or a pig for repairs. My mate has a Model X and somebody sideswiped him and took his bumper with them. It took Tesla about seven weeks to sort it. Sounds about right. Yeah. Yeah. Tesla just awful for repairs. Uh, wow, the live chat on stream uh, ignored my last post. Uh, I don't see your post on uh, in my uh, YouTube chat either. So there's a very good chance that YouTube just shadow banned it. <laughs> uh, feel free to uh, repost. Uh, perhaps try, I don't know, different wording or something. Um, yeah. Um, yet to see a person, a Tesla in person, uh, that is acceptable panel caps. <laughs> yeah. Um, it takes like six months to get a rear light from Audi for my car. Jesus, why? Uh, does anyone have a car with a DSG gearbox on? Are they reliable, please? I have a DSG gearbox. Yes. Um, so, uh, what car are you talking about specifically is it front wheel drive or all wheel drive uh because in uh in audis for example um the uh, like my s4 has a very different dsg to the dsg that's in a uh, golf or an a1 or two or three uh, Passat, so I'm pretty sure that's front wheel drive, and so I'm pretty sure that's the same DSG that you'll find in a Golf or a um, A3 or whatever. Um, they're not that bad. Uh, they're not. Over, it also depends on the year. Um, what year is that one? Because it it, it 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 depends. Uh, my Sharan before this car had uh, DSG and it was faultless. Nice. Uh, DSG so miserable. Mine isn't. Some of them. The DSG in the um, the Mercedes A Class. That was dreadful. Oh, so bad. It would let you roll back. Like you stop on a hill, you let off your your brake pedal, and it would roll back. But you don't have you don't even have a handbrake anymore, so you can't put the handbrake on me. Stop. Ah, uh, um, 2018-ish. Okay. There's a very good chance that it's better then. Um. Uh, my uncle has a DSG in his Seat Alhambra, uh, and it's not great. Fairly unresponsive. Ah, there's your problem. It's a Seat. <laughs> <laughs> no, I mean, Seats, especially these days, are just golfs with less features. But, um, yeah, I'm, I'm pretty sure it's, it's, it, it's decent. Um, for a, uh, <laughs> for a, uh, Probably front-wheel drive car, it's generally fine. 
uh, see at is VW is Audi or Skoda. Yeah, Vag Group. Hence why um, I've said that it's it's just the Golf in in our VW in in uh, with less features because it is. Um, although there is there is a bit of a distinction uh, in terms of Audi to the rest of them, um, especially in in interior uh, quality. I say that having an Audi, I know. Um, there is actually a, a bit of a noticeable difference. Um, uh, say it uses a DQ500, uh, like it's one of the biggest gearboxes uh, they make, I think. Interesting. I wonder why. Um, uh, VW DSG, is that the one that falls apart at 150,000 Ks and costs your left kidney to get a refurbished one? Um, so that was, I think, the like 2007, 8 one. Um, I think they have uh, improved a little bit. Uh, my Mondeo has a power shift and I have issues uh, with it going into safe mode, says on uh, the dash gearbox malfunction, seek owner manual. Is power shift the automated manual? Because it kind of sounds like it is. Because if it's torque converter based, then besides the clutches slipping in that, um, it or actually the mechatronics unit failing, um, there's relatively little. Uh, that can go wrong um, to give you a, a warning message at very least. Toyota Master Race. Fair play. Certainly reliable. Yeah, semi-auto. Right. Okay, actually, hold on. So, I know that the... Um, uh, the first car that I um, got for my wife uh, was a, a smart car. The second generation one. Um, that had an, a, a robotized manual, <laughs> um, which means that it is a, a full manual transmission, but they stick two motors for the gear selector and a linear actuator, which actually it was just a motor and a rack and pinion, uh, for the clutch. It was awful. I cannot uh, recommend never touching one of those. Um, I wonder how similar that actually is. Power shift. Oh, power shift is a six or seven speed dual clutch automatic transmission. Huh. Well, there you go. Started in about 2008. Okay. Oh, they also came in Volvos. There you go. Um, so, so on the Wikipedia page, there's the blurb, which is quite short. There's the list of cars, which is reasonable. And then there is a whole section for faulty operation. There are so many failures. <laughs> uh, apparently, uh, Ford has faced class action lawsuits and fraud investigations in the USA, Australia, and Canada over the power shift Gearbox being defective, potentially dangerous in the Fiesta, uh, Focus, and EcoSport. Um, and the US courts tentatively approved a settlement in 2017. Um, yeah, boy! <laughs> um, what does dual clutch mean? So, uh, in... Uh, In a manual gearbox, you have a single clutch, right? You have a uh, a single uh, clutch disc that spins between the flywheel and the pressure plate. So as you push your foot on the clutch pedal, that releases pressure from the pressure plate and allows the flywheel and pressure plate to spin uh, as one. And then the clutch disc that's in the middle, the sort of sandwich filler, to spin uh, at a different speed uh, because it's connected to the gearbox. 
When you then let go of the clutch pedal, the pressure plate then clamps down onto the clutch plate and then onto the flywheel, and that spins uh, the transmission or the transmission's input shaft at the same speed as the engine. In an automatic transmission, what you do is replace that clutch assembly with a torque converter. So you have essentially kind of two fans that have fluid in the middle. And so one spins from the engine and one is connected to the transmission. And then uh, they uh, can either slip. So when you're stationary, the engine's spinning, but the transmission one isn't. Or they can spin at the same rate and lock up. And so you get proper, you know, power... Um, delivery and inside the transmission there are a bunch of individual clutches that control which of the gear sets are connected. Now in a dual clutch transmission it takes the idea of having clutches as the input device but it uses two of them in sort of nested baskets so you have an inner and an outer clutch uh, and the, the reason for that is that you have two input shafts then one of the input shafts is connected to the odd gear, so gear one, three, uh, five, seven, if you have them. And the other one is connected to the even gear, so two, four, six, eight, however many you have. Um, and so only one of those clutches is engaged at any one time, but it means that when you need to shift gears, instead of the transmission having to change clutch packs inside or for most DSGs actually just physically change the gears as you would in a manual transmission uh, it just switches which clutch pack is engaged pretty handy it means you get much faster shifts and so the let's say the inner one is engaged the outer one isn't spinning or is spinning at the rate of the transmission whatever and then when you need to change from say first gear to second it just opens the inner one and closes the outer one so it's almost an instantaneous shift you don't notice that change uh, and then the uh, inner one which is now not spinning or not engaged can then change gears to third gear and then when it needs to change it just swaps or blends between the two so that you're now in third gear and there's no lag time in between with a standard automatic transmission there is a lag time between gears because it has to disengage one and engage the next one and of course, in a manual, you have to disengage the clutch, change the gear, and then re-engage the clutch. So DSG is, is uh, functionally instant. Uh, there is some uh, trickery in terms of how it guesses what gear you're going to be switching to next. So if you're accelerating, it generally picks the next gear uh, or pre-selects the next gear. Uh, whereas if you're uh, braking, it will pre-select one or even two down, depending. Um, so yeah, that's how transmissions work. Uh, my semi-auto gearbox is okay at higher gears when it's 5, 6, 7, and 8 on the motorway. It's super smooth. Lower gears is not very good at all. It doesn't help that the turbo lags chronically. Yeah, so uh, if you have a Dacia, um, not the Duster, don't, the other one. Um, so I've driven a Dacia with the DSG. It, it's fine. It's not fast. <laughs> um, Harry, so it kind of sounds like it's something that you could probably contact Ford over and then say, look, you were sued in America, Canada, and Australia and settled in America. You need to fix this. Um, yeah. <clears throat> where does my release bearing come into this if you have a manual transmission the thing that pushes on the leaf springs in on the pressure plate is a release bearing um that is a static arm with a bearing on the front so that as it comes into contact and pushes on the clutch which is spinning it can evenly push on those clutch springs to then release the pressure while also spinning with the transmission or with the um, engine. <clears throat> no worries, Harry. Happy to help. Uh, 
Um, where does uh, the family Cleo's brake calipers rubbing on the discs come into it? <laughs> God, I hate Cleo's. It was my first car, and the head gasket blew at 40,000 miles. <laughs> uh, no worries, Austin. Good to see you. Hope you have a great week. Oh, dear. Um... Uh, and now we're on the subject of wife's cars. My wife, Sharon, has a problem with oil. It's just disappearing. No sign of oil beneath the car when parked, so it doesn't seem to be leaking. Uh, all good there, no residue. Uh, guest trip to the garage is in order. So the, the thing to look at, if you can't find where the oil is going, uh, is uh, look at the tailpipe, especially when you start it. Um, if it's burning oil, the, the smoke that comes out of the exhaust will be blue. Or sort of white and blue. <laughs> I was wondering when you'd show up to talk about this, Dan. <laughs> um, uh, that one. Um, so it, it will be a, a blue or a whitish blue um, that will be coming out. And it often has a bit of a distinctive smell, although not uh, as, as clear as coolant, which is quite sweet when you smell it. Um, from the exhaust, so yeah. Look out for blue smoke. Yaris is a Toyota. It is indeed. It's also basically a Peugeot and a Citroen. The uh, the the Yaris, the Citroen C1, and the Peugeot 106 or 108 or whatever it is. Um, were all developed in conjunction with each other. It was a group project. They're all they're all the same shell. They're all the same, basically everything except for the badge and some minor, minor tweaks. Oh, that's the Igo. Sorry, you're right. Yeah, yeah. Um, that's what I was thinking of. So that's basically a Citroen. <laughs> uh. Forgot that there's a smaller car than the Yaris. Actually, when we were at the SMMT um, day uh, last year, now uh, we were stopped at the Toyota stand because I was I wanted to drive the GR Yaris, uh, which was great, and um, the uh, the um, like intern that was was uh, left there. Um, was we were talking to and uh, she was saying that uh, Toyota, like Toyota UK, uh, went and bought a Yaris from uh, like a farmer in Ireland who had bought the very first Yaris, like first generation Yaris, and had driven it like three thousand miles since two thousand and seven. So Toyota, like marketing UK marketing, bought the car from him and brought it back as a uh, like museum piece basically because it was otherwise in, in mint condition and had barely driven any miles and she had to drive it back from the port to like London or whatever uh, and so she put more miles on it just driving it back to Toyota than you know had been done in almost the last like 15 years um, so yeah but it's also a Yaris it was a rickety bucket the whole way <laughs> <laughs> uh i've got to choose a new car next month uh the date has finally come again fast uh options are x-trail 5008 kodiak or tiguan why are they pushing suvs as mpvs nowadays they always have tiny interiors no right like the audi q5 is meant like it's the the same car as mine like the uprights the spindles the brake calipers like i'm actually using audi q5 brake calipers because they're the four piston brembo ones and they're nicer um on my car it's all the same part numbers it's, it's everything you know everything the the dashboard the steering wheel like, everything is just the same part in a slightly different shell except it's a smaller car than mine there's less cargo room there's less space in it there's less rear leg room in it than my estate I don't, I, I don't understand. I really don't. Because I've driven the SUVs, I drove the Audi Q5 Sportback, stupid thing, the EV, um, e-tron, and, uh, that was awful. Like, yeah, you're up high, 
but it's a horrible driving experience. <laughs> Q7. Oh god, that fucking boat. <laughs> um, I extended the lease on my car for another year. It came quick. Fair. I, I, I just, I thought, didn't you get the Dacia? Like, mid last year? I thought they were fighting over it. Every car should be in a state. I agree. <laughs> uh, have you seen the Microlino? Is that the really weird little, like, elderly people car? Or am I thinking of something else? That might actually be called the tiny car. Executive Saloon. <laughs> um, so, first of all, um, did you know that my car <laughs> can fit a washing machine and a dishwasher on the back of it at once? <laughs> um, and second of all, if it's going to be an Executive Saloon, and this is a quite a, a solid, um, and I think, agreeable position that we can all, uh, you know, uh, agree on. It should have folding rear seats. Dan, do you want to let the uh, the people in the chat know what your car does not have? <laughs> uh, it's all safety standards. The new cars are like two tons. The requirement is the roof must not buckle if you turn the car around. They make thick pillars. Yeah... I mean, the, the SUV aspect is, is horrible because it's just less safe for everyone. Um, but, uh, yeah. It should if the first owner decided to spec it. Yeah, see, the thing is, though, the thing is, I don't think any other car brand makes you pay extra for folding rear seats on a car that otherwise you have no access to put longer things in. <laughs> Mercedes, okay, maybe Mercedes. <laughs> Audi doesn't, I'm pretty sure. I, I think. I hope. Yeah. I remember the first BMW X something review on Top Gear was so negative, yet they're so common now. Yeah. Yeah, uh, I, I think I remember the one as well. Um, is that an X5? Nothing beats heated seat subscriptions. Uh, I'm going to see if uh, A4 of the same gen had folding seats. I'm pretty sure it does. Pretty sure. Pretty sure. Uh, my Mitsubishi 380 only had a ski port. I mean, even my Volvo had folding rear seats. So, come on, up your game, people. Um, also, nothing beats heated seat subscriptions. Um, yeah. Yeah, I hope that that dies. <laughs> I really hate all of it, all of it, all of it. Uh, that would still work for me because I need to move some car up. <laughs> uh, do you want a hand buying some pipe from Screwfix? <laughs> uh, wait, what car doesn't have folding receipts? A uh, BMW 5 Series. It's an optional extra. You have to pay extra money to have folding rear seats in a BMW 5 Series or 3 Series, I think, if I remember rightly. Because didn't your 3 Series also not have folding rear seats? <laughs> Look, BMW again. <laughs> uh, I went to order the Dacia, changed my mind, and extended the lease on mine because Mobility told us they're bringing a load of bigger cars on the scheme next year. They lied. Nice. A very uncommon option in the F10 in the UK. I don't know why. I don't know what. Well, okay, it's probably because it's insane that you have to pay extra money for folding seats. That should just be the standard. But like, yeah, uh, my three series didn't have it. Uh, have, uh, but it was corporate fleet spec. So again, that shouldn't have been an option. It just should have been included, <laughs> like almost every other car. Uh, um, unfair play, Joe. Um, yeah. Uh, none of those options are great. <laughs> the Tiguan's pretty small for being a big car. Um, so probably the X Trail. If you have to, if you have have to have one of those, I'd probably be the one to get. Um. 
The 5008 is just hideous and it's a Peugeot, so. Uh, I can't remember what the Kodiak is. So, yeah. Uh, hey, I'm still waiting for my break subscription. <laughs> uh, <laughs> pay a monthly fee to be able to stop. God, don't give them ideas. <laughs> um, what about the big Skodas? I thought they were good. What big Skodas? What, the um, Enyaq or whatever? The EV one? Or is that... No, that is the Kodiak, isn't it? Or is that... Yeah. I can't remember. Um, I do like the X-Trail. I, I test drove it and was impressed. It is the Kodiak. Right. Um, uh, it was trying too hard to be a truck, like the big Shogun. Fair. I... I No, so uh, this is a tangent or a, a long-winded uh, trail of thoughts. Uh, for some reason, uh, my uh, stepmother uh, was given a courtesy car when her car was broken or something. I can't remember. Uh, and she had a like a Mercedes um, C-Class coupe one, um, and. Uh, so they gave her uh, a Nissan Nirvana, the like pickup truck with the bed cover. Uh, yeah, that was interesting. <laughs> um, but I thought m my my brain was telling me that the X Trail is uh, was the Nirvana, but it's it's not. It's a different vehicle. Um, I'm pretty sure at least the old X Trail was pretty good, but um, yeah. Just fried two kilograms of chicken, but I'm not hungry anymore. Fuck's <laughs> sake, Chris. <laughs> oh, madman. I thought Kodiak is a mech warrior or a camera. <laughs> Good options. Uh, oh, speaking of clutches, my new uh, car auto transmission is slipping every so often. What on the Kia Picanto GT or whatever it was? Um... That's impressive. I like to go for the X-Trail or the Kodiak, but it would be nice to have more options. Uh, but hey, hope I just can't be choosers. Yeah, fair. For... <sighs> right. I think that'll do. My voice is starting to go. Um, so I will uh, I will leave it there. Um, I hope you all have a wonderful week. I hope you all stay safe. I hope you all have fun. And uh, yeah, we'll see you all tomorrow for a video, Monday for a video, next Thursday for a stream. All right. Toodaloo.